starting this episode and somebody got in a little bit of an issue with me i don't be doing nothing to nobody but anyway let's get into this first question from my guy anthony he said what's good engraving hope you and your family are well i have a little bit of an issue with you respectfully few videos ago i remember you saying that hollywood brown was the best wide receiver the ravens ever drafted over tory smith i <laughs> i have the numbers of their first three seasons to debunk that tory smith three seasons 164 receptions 2824 yards 19 touchdowns hollywood brown 195 receptions 2361 yards 21 touchdowns now hollywood has more catches and two more tds but the thing that I believe put Smith over Brown was those P.I. calls. Really? The pass interference calls? That's what put Torrey Smith over Hollywood Brown? Not a route tree. <laughs> Not that. Not them really maximizing his use as a wide receiver. Not him being really Ravens wide receiver one. But P.I. calls? Let's keep going. I don't remember Hollywood getting one P.I. call as a Raven. I could be mistaken, but I just don't remember. Hey, I don't remember either, but I don't think P.I. calls would be something that puts one receiver over another. But anyway, he said, um, also, Torrey would fight for extra yards. I, I can't fight with you on that one. I can't argue that one at all. Uh, I don't have an issue with Hollywood, but if I had to choose, it would be Torrey over Hollywood. Sorry for the long rant. Hope you and your family stay safe out there. So, that's fine. That's fine. Something that I also said in that same video that you're talking about, I said that if you if, if you ask somebody who is the best receiver the Ravens have ever drafted and developed both, I said their answer would be either Hollywood Brown or Torrey Smith. And it all depends on who you ask, but it's going to be one of those two. And if, if, if one person's answer is Hollywood Brown, then the person right after that is probably going to be Torrey Smith. If one person's answer is Torrey Smith, then right after that is going to be Hollywood Brown. It wasn't to, to pit them against each other. And I don't even think that numbers don't ever tell the whole story. They tell part of it, but they don't tell the whole story. I can't just look at the numbers as, oh, by the numbers, then this guy was a better receiver. Because of the numbers, we got to watch the games. We got to watch the film. We got to see what they did, what they didn't do. And the, one of the biggest reasons why I, I say Hollywood is because, again, as a wide receiver one, yeah, he did have limitations. He, he was a little smaller, so a catch radius is a little smaller. Um, but as a wide receiver one, he was able to take on that role um, better than Torrey Smith did when Torrey Smith was wide receiver one. When Torrey Smith was wide receiver one, it was like, ooh, whoa. Um, but I do think both of them uh, would be phenomenal as wide receiver twos. But we never really got to see that with Hollywood. Because, um, again, last year, everything was all out of whack with the injuries and all. And it's just, uh, we never really get to see it. Um, because Torrey Smith, his, his best role was when he had somebody opposite of him who was the sort of possession receiver, was that like that dog receiver, that nasty receiver. When he got Anquan Bowden, ooh, woo, it was a beautiful thing. Oh, Torrey Smith excelled. But then... When they got rid of Anquan Bolden and they made Torrey Smith, it was Torrey Smith and Jacoby Jones. It was like, ooh, yeah, this, this, this is not, this ain't it. But then when they got Steve Smith Senior, it was like, oh, ha <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, I, I wish we could have seen something like that with Hollywood, like for the Ravens to have gotten um, somebody who could really be that wide receiver one. It could have been Rashad Bale, but again, injuries. Injuries messed everything up. Sammy Watkins, <laughs> injuries. Injuries messed everything up. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's all good, man. Next question, and this is such a great question. It came from my guy, Paul. He said, how concerned should we be about Marcus Peters? Now, just from the title alone, we should be very concerned, in my opinion, because I keep on asking, keep on hearing nothing. I have, have, have not heard anything on Marcus Peters whatsoever. Saw him at training camp, way to, hey, MP, but that's it. Have not heard anything. Anything about his prognosis, his progression, his status, nothing. So I think we should be very concerned about Marcus Peters. But let's get to your question. He said, hey, Engraven, it's been a while since I sent in a question. And I know my last few are very long, so I try to keep this one short and simple. The, this last week, uh, we Ravens fans saw the long-awaited return of J.K. Dobbins, who should greatly uh, benefit our offense when he returns and if he can stay healthy. Hmm. 
it sucks, but I'm I'm glad you put that part in there because that's uh, it, that that just applies so much. Anyway, uh, he said we've also heard that Ronnie Stanley appears to be doing well and should be able to return very soon, if not week one. But unless I'm missing something, we haven't heard much of anything about Marcus Peters, who we really missed last year. Oh man, we sure did. We miss him so bad. Uh, with him in 2019 and 2020, our secondary was elite. But with him missing in 2021, our pass defense was literally the worst in the league. I know we added reinforcement this offseason in the form of Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, Jalen Lamar Davis, Demarion Williams, Kyle Fuller. But will this be enough if Marcus Peters has to miss a significant period of time? Um, I hope that the Ravens don't have to find out. I hope Marcus Peters ends up being back. Um... Right now, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I got to ask around a little bit more. Um, but I don't know anything that's going on. I mean, what's going on with Marcus Peters? And it's like, it, it, it's, it's the craziest thing. Like, we have literally not heard anything about MP. So, anyway. Um, he said, by the way, I'm really excited to see what Isaiah likely can do for our offense. From what I've seen, he looks like a matchup nightmare for defenses and like he could be a legit deep threat. I think he's one of the biggest steals in the draft and the Ravens were very smart to select him. Anyway, best of luck to you and the family. And I'm out. Appreciate it, Paul. Um, and yeah, that's hopefully we can get some answers to your question because I'm lost on that. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of nfl questions from subs um and it's where you can ask any nfl question you want to and we answer it in videos just like these uh, i appreciate y'all participating shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons uh, if you want to become a patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to don't worry about it our next question comes from a frequent team keep it clean patron a frequent a uh, person in question from subs nazarene and a name that y'all are so familiar with and if you're not you will be uh he said what's good fam i just watched a video on roquan smith i don't think a new receiver will stunt the receiver's growth you either got it or you don't period oh i love that i love that i, I, I love it i ain't even got we don't even got to continue that's it but anyway Let's continue. Uh, but I do believe our receivers will be good if Lamar is good. I also want to make this statement. Last year, Bateman was disrespected by the Ravens. Hear me out, though, bro. Bateman would go off in a game, and then the next game he's involved, or they waited till it was garbage time to target him in that Dolphins game. That was so frustrating. Hollywood had a really bad game. Sammy Watkins was having a really bad game. We look, we see Rashad Bateman on the sideline. Standing up, not limping around, not hurting. Just standing up on the sideline. It's like, hold up, Hollywood is struggling in this game. Sammy Watkins is struggling in this game. The, the Florida Ravens are not doing good right now. Why are we not involving Rashad Bateman? But then at the end of the game, when it was kind of out of reach, pretty much out of reach, not all the way out of reach, but pretty much out of reach, that's when they start involving Bateman. It's like, oh. Anyway, so I, I feel what you're saying. Uh, it happened to James Prochet too. But anyway, let's keep moving. He said, I think it has something to do with the jealousy in the locker room. 11 of 12 Rashad Bateman first catches were first downs. Every time Bateman went off, he barely was targeted the next game. The fans were going crazy whenever he caught the ball. He was a fan favorite since day one. I think that caused problems in the locker room personally. I, I don't think so at all. Um, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't. But let me, let, let's keep going. He said, I think Lamar and Greg wanted to make Hollywood happy, so they targeted him every chance that they got. That's why he was top 10 in targets. Now, that part, I think, is true. Because Hollywood had let it be known this was not an offense that he was happy being a part of. Uh, and the whole trade request was old news. He had been on that for a long time. So I, I do think that Lamar did a lot of forcing to Hollywood. Um, probably a lot of times when he shouldn't have, too. Uh, but I think that, that he was really trying. Like, hey, that's my guy. That's my boy. I, I'm trying to make my boy happy. I don't want him to leave. We trying to be the Florida Ravens. But Hollywood said, no, thanks. Love you, Lamar. Don't love the offense. I'm out. But anyway, 
Um, I think they chose his happiness over what would have actually worked last year. I don't think Hollywood, no disrespect, would have been our number one receiver this year. Uh, no, I don't think he would have been. I think it would have been Bateman. And, and Holly, like we were talking about earlier, Hollywood, Hollywood would have been number two. And that would have been just fine. Hollywood even said, who was he talking to? It was in, in, a, in an interview where he was talking to somebody and he said that he looks forward to being a number two. And I was like, oh, okay. Shout out to honesty. He said, I also say this. If Hollywood would have stayed, they would have been a nice one-two combo. Oh, yes, man. Oh, um, they would have been. Oh, they would have been. Mm, they would have been. Man. Mm, mm, mm. I think our receivers are highly disrespected and underrated. Adding another receiver is fine with me, though. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> How you hit us with that swerve like that? Like, okay. I, I, feel, I think our receivers are highly disrespected and underrated. Adding another receiver is fine with me, though. The more, the better. I believe our top four receivers on the depth chart are legit. I was definitely uh, listing over adding Julio, but no one else unless it was through a trade. I think we got the juice to dominate. I hope so. Uh, if we don't, I'm quite sure we will draft the receiver high in the draft because we won't have the money to pay one after paying Lamar. Yes, they will, man. Yes, they will. If you want something done, you can make it work, man. Straight up. Uh, he said, keep the content coming, bro. <laughs> I love it. Are you not entertained? In the gladiator voice. Appreciate it, Nazarene. This was fun. Lamar versus Trey. Next question came from my guy, JT. He said, what's good, Engraven? JT, here. Big shout out to you. The fam and all the team keep it clean. My question is, why is Trey Lance viewed in such high regard? But when it comes to Lamar, he is still battling the same stereotypes dating back to high school. Hmm. Uh, I'm not trying to take shots at Trey or make this a Lamar versus Trey topic. But in my opinion, Lamar does everything better. There is no comparison. We'll see what uh, with, with Trey Lance. I'm, I'm excited to see him play. I'm excited to see what he does with this 49ers team uh, versus what Jimmy G did with this 49ers team. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm not too familiar with his game. I know he got an arm, and I know he could take off with them legs too, uh, but I'm not too familiar with his game. So I'm, I'm excited to see just how it ends up working out. He said, Lamar played at a better school, won a Heisman Trophy, continues to get better every year, and didn't even mention the unanimous MVP. Uh, with Trey, he played against lower ranked competition in college and only played 18 games. But scouts and others have so much to say about his potential and upside. Um, depending on how it goes down, uh, he could end, it could end up being a lot of the same things. It could end up being a lot of the same conversation that surrounds Lamar Jackson uh, with Trey Lance. Because um, a lot of times that's, that's how it happens. A, a, a lot of quarterbacks who uh are athletically gifted um they get placed into this box uh by a lot of experts and analysts and whatnot they get placed into this box where people just view them as athletes and they, they and, and you, you could tell like what the wording and stuff that they use when they talk about them but they view them as athletes uh and they talk about them as athletes but they don't really talk about them as quarterbacks so I hope I hope the same thing that happened to Lamar doesn't happen to Trey Lance. Uh, I I would love for it to stop with Lamar, but it's never gonna stop. It's never gonna stop with him. Um, so with Trey Lance, uh, hopefully it doesn't start, but that it, it it probably will end up starting. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, he said, there's just so much unknown about Trey, yet he's put on such a pedestal. We're always hearing about, what if Lamar gets hurt? Yet throughout his career, he's been one of the healthiest quarterbacks. Then there's Trey, who broke his finger in one of his first few games that he claims affected his rookie season. I know this all seems like I'm hating on Trey, but I'm, I'm not. It's just an observation, in my opinion. I wish him the best, uh, just not against us. <laughs> Hope my question makes it on the show. Peace and blessings. Big up to you and the fam, JT. Hey, appreciate it, man. And yeah, it's going to be one of those things where we just got to wait it out um, and, and hope that they don't try to put Trey Lance in that same box like they do. But if it happens, it won't be a surprise. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, oh, it's time for more questions than Graven. Question one, it seems to be a foregone conclusion that Rashad Bateman is already the hands down wide receiver one and that all the other receivers are fighting to determine who falls where in the pecking order. That is very true. Uh, you've seen, you, you, you've heard about what's been happening in training camp. Uh, and if you get a chance to, to watch it, you will see it for yourself too. Um, you see how the Ravens have portrayed uh, Rashad Bateman, how they, they've prop, propped him up. Like, oh, hey, this, this is the guy. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. And I think that's, that's the expectation. And Rashad Bateman propped himself up. He said, hey, Hollywood, he was cool. That was my brother, but it's my time now. So he's embracing that role. 
So it's coming from all different sides and all different people, including Rashad Bateman, to really take on that role as wide receiver one. Uh, he said, um, do we know for certain that Bateman is our wide receiver one? Could James Prochet, a.k.a. Sticky Fingers, uh, outstar 2021 first round pick and presumed top receiver? Could the Ravens 2026 round pick overcome all odds and outperform his good friend and teammate? Hey, I wouldn't be mad. Reason being because if James Prochet is performing like that and then you still got Rashad Bateman and he's performing good too. Ooh, hey, the more people performing better, the merrier. I'm, I'll be with it all day. So I wouldn't care. Hey, whoever, wide receiver, one, two, three, four. If you a baller, you a baller. And I don't care where you listed it on a depth chart. Uh, he said, Bateman is nice with his and looks like he's going to make some real noise in the NFL. But is the football universe sleeping on pro Shea? That hard work is showing up in his preseason performance. Well, we'll see if it shows up in the preseason performance. Well, by the time you see this video, they will have already played the first preseason game. Uh, but we'll see. If he, if he does play in that first preseason game, hopefully he can go off. I don't think Rashad Bateman would play because he just got back to practice a couple days ago, but you never know. So we'll see. Question number two. You may remember that I'm the one who predicted a 10-7 and outcome because of the very stiff competition in the AFC this season. Although I'd much rather see us add four more wins for a 14-3 and record, a record that I believe would have been achievable with the addition of that juggernaut offensive weapon. With no positive news about Ronnie Stanley, I'm already counting him out. Questions and reasonable calls for concern over Tyler Linder Linderbaum's uh, lingering foot condition. Reports that Jawan James, despite his athleticism, appears lethargic, lazy, and lack of days ago, according to the media. Hearing the comments made by Cincinnati stable of wide receivers and given the current status of the offensive line, and the very real possibility that Lamar's blindside may be more of a liability than last season, do you still stand by your 14-3 and prediction, or would you feel more comfortable hanging out with me in the 10-7 and zone? You're welcome to join us. We have cold beverages and nachos. No, 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 no. I, I said 14 and 3 would that that would be like a high for me. 14 and 3, 15 and 2. I, I was thinking more like 12 and 5, 13 and 4. So not too far off, but still a little far off. So yeah, I, I think 12 and 5, 13 and 4. That's what I'm thinking. Uh if if they're healthy. If they're healthy. Uh hopefully they're healthy. And hopefully they can exceed my expectations and just blow them out, blow them out the water. Uh he said disclaimer. I firmly believe that Lamar is going to find a way to put up great numbers against many teams while keeping himself in that conversation uh, for his second MVP season. But with the condition of the offensive line, my skepticism over just how fully recovered J.K. Dobbins is keeps me stuck at 10 and 7. Ravens, please prove me wrong. Ravens, please prove him wrong. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance for the